body. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. It's a beautiful day to be alive and a great opportunity to learn about the greatness of our God. And as you can tell, I am so excited, I'm pumped up for today or tonight's episode. And the reason why I love serving God's people is because of the lessons that I've learned over the course of my life. You see, the Lord loves to show me my past mistakes, <laughs> my epic fails, me thinking I had all the answers. And mind you, a lot of my misfortunes were somewhat comical. <laughs> Other times, they were painful moments where I've said things to people that I care about and I said things out of anger and it resulted in relational setbacks. And then there's times where my stubbornness got the best of me. My pride showed up and exposed me in a way where I realize, I realize now that I was immature, just an insecure person. And for time's sake, for time's sake, I won't air out all of my dirty laundry. <laughs> but I want our podcasting family to know that I'm still a work in progress, a sinner saved by grace. You see, the Lord has given me his wisdom to capture his message. You see, there is so much wisdom that the Lord has for us, and it will take a lifetime <laughs> to obtain a smidgen of his thoughts that pertain to life. But that's my goal. <laughs> that is my goal. He wants me to share with you today or tonight. But before we move toward the topic that the Lord has impressed upon me, there's a scripture that I believe speaks to the sentiments of God's desire for you to live. It's found in Psalms, Psalms 34, verses 11 through 15 is a powerful look at ourselves, analyzing our behaviors when the pressures, the pressures of life causes us to respond. Let's look at the psalmist speak about God's blueprint for success. It says, come. Children, listen to me. Let me teach you how to honor the Lord. Do you love life? Do you relish the chance to enjoy good things? Then you must keep your tongue from evil and keep your lips from speaking lies. Turn away from evil. Do good. Seek peace and go after it. The Lord's eyes watch the righteous. His ears listen to their cries for help. And there are two requests that David, the writer, is wanting to demonstrate to us about living a successful life and two questions that he poses to us today or tonight. Now in this particular, in, in these particular verses, the first request says, listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. You see, people of God, many of us struggle with listening to instructions. This causes us to go after the wrong things, only to miss out on achieving victory. We swing and miss. We fail to hit the game-winning shot. We miss out on the promotion. We even miss out on the blessings of God, the direction that God has for our lives. We miss out on hearing from the Lord. We miss out on a chance to get intimate with Him, to learn of our purpose and plan for our lives simply because we didn't listen to instruction. 
that was the first request. Listen to me. The next request, David says, let me teach you how to honor the Lord. <laughs> it is said in our current society that we have to be taught how to honor God. You know, in America, it talks about that the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivincible with liberty and justice for all? Isn't it interesting that we understand about listening, that we struggle with listening, but then we still need to be taught how to honor God who we're supposed to be trusting in. But David says, let me teach you. You're missing it. You're going in a different direction, but let me teach you. I've made some mistakes in my life. I've done some things that I'm so embarrassed about, but I'm going to teach you how to honor the Lord. You see, people of God, David was, David was a famous, <laughs> he was a famous musician. You know, he played the harp. It's beautiful to watch a person play that instrument. The sound of the harp, as it echoes throughout the room, brings a, a quietness and spirit when we listen to the strings being plugged. He played the harp. He was a statesman. He was a great soldier. And what I love about David is his focus was not on teaching us how to play the harp. <laughs> he had other things that he had in mind. So he didn't even focus on the harp or how to defend yourself with a sword or spear or the intricacies of state policy. David simply was focusing on, through God's word, let me teach you. Let me teach you how to honor the Lord. You see, Colossians, the third chapter and the 17th verse, it tells us whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God the Father through him. If you really pay attention to that verse, whatever you do, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, whether you're at the grocery store, whether you're at the gas station, whether you're on the football field, whether you're at the movies, whether you're at a festival, whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God, the Father, through him. And now he starts to ask questions. We started with the first two about being taught and listening, but now he begins to ask questions. He says, do you love life? Now we can really get deep into this, but time won't allow for us to get so caught up in those Four words, do you love life? It's a great question. <laughs> Many times our circumstances dictate how our life is going to be. Your mood, your outlook, your belief that you can possibly have a good life. Well, the Bible tells us for those who want to love life, and see good days. It says you should keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from speaking lies. You should shun evil and do good. Seek peace and chase after it. The Lord's eyes are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. 
But the Lord cannot tolerate those who do evil. That's found in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. The next question says, do you relish the chance to enjoy good things? So the first question was, do you want to, do you love life? And do you relish the chance to enjoy good things? I know I do. I know that I love to experience and to be enveloped into good life, good things. We should relish the chance to enjoy good things. <laughs> but oftentimes we relish in things that pertain to ungodliness. We want to be accepted by the masses. <laughs> we want to be validated by our friends. But we go out of our way to compromise our integrity. We begin to live a life where sin abounds, always breaking the rules. <laughs> we don't like to be told what to do. You know how many years it took for us to finally start wearing the seatbelt? It took 10 to 15 years after all of these unfortunates happened in our world. Finally, most people in our world wear a seatbelt. But that's sad that we have to break the rules because we don't like to be told what to do. And then we find ourselves in a place of loneliness. I'm here to let you know, people of God, there is a better way. God's word declares in order to live in the fullness of God's freedom and to reinvigorate your spirit, it says you must keep your tongue from evil and to keep your lips from speaking lies. <laughs> oh, we live in a society, we, lead, we live in a world, we have these social platforms, we have televisions now with reality TV. All of the soap operas are now more vivid than ever. All of the soap operas we used to watch, and many, some of us still watch these soap operas, and we used to tell ourselves, this is all fake, this is all make-believe, nobody acts like this. When in actuality, that is our world. Social media, reality TV, and the like has now transferred itself into our mainstream society. And we see all of the evil. We see how we speak to one another, what we say to one another. Think about it, people of God. Your evil tongue, your lips that speak lies, deception, manipulation. Where have we gone wrong? But God goes on to say, he says, turn away from evil. So it's one thing to say these things, to, to think these things, to allow these things to come out of our spirit, out of our soul. But now he goes further to say, turn away from evil. Turn away from those things that's causing you pain and, and anguish. Turn away from that sin that so easily sets you back. So here, there are three key components that gives us the opportunity to see, to succeed in life. Two of the three components have to do with our speech, our thought process. And the last component is dealing with turning away from evil. People of God, it's on us. It's not about your family, not about your friends, it's not about anybody else, but it's on us to achieve victory and to be free from the toxins of sin. Now listen, James chapter 3 deals with our tongue and how it's considered a restless evil full of deadly poison. 
But if you go down to verse 13, I believe, the Bible gives us the key in winning this battle with our tongue, with our speech. It says in verse 13, are any of you wise and understanding? Show that your actions are good with a humble lifestyle that comes from wisdom. This is success. And when you turn away from evil, that's called repentance. To turn away from sin and to turn to Jesus for the solution to your freedom. You see, Romans chapter 6 verse 23 states the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It goes on to say, do good. Now, it's one thing to hear that phrase, do good, do the right thing, just do it. It's one thing to mention the words, but it's our actions is what's important in order for us to do good. To change the narrative that's going on in your life. To seek peace and to go after peace. To go after it with your whole heart, with your whole soul, your very being. You see, peace is, is also a gift to obtain. It is not cotton candy. <laughs> it's not wasted calories. It's not something that it's just for a moment. But God's peace can last a lifetime when you pursue the right substance. For the Lord watches the righteous. He's watching us when we do right and when we do wrong. But he really pays attention to those who are living righteous. His focus is keeping you on the right road. God's ultimate goal is to keep you in perfect peace as Isaiah 26 and 3 declares. To keep you above the corruption and for you to remain blessed every single day of your life. You see, the reason I'm going this direction is because the Lord has impressed upon me the need to talk about purpose to really focus our attentions on purpose and how precious time is to our everyday walk. Now listen, people of God, there is a man by the name of Elon Musk, and he recently tweeted a statement where he says, time is the ultimate currency. Time is the ultimate currency. You see, we have so many people in our world. We have so many people in our neighborhoods. We have so many family members who are wasting precious time doing things that goes against their purpose. And at the rate that they're going, they're never going to reach their fullest potential. We are like dogs chasing our tail. <laughs> going around in circles, still attached to the same old drama, still stuck on the same temptations, still being selfish and greedy, envious and jealous, and our tongue, woo, our speech is raging with gossip. Social media is a, is a great opportunity to show our ugly side of us. Yes, yes, the world will accept you when you live this way. You can be very popular. You can make a name for yourself. You can get a whole bunch of likes and thumbs ups. But the reality is we are chasing after something that ultimately we will never grasp. It will slip through our fingers. And now we have become weary towards our purpose. Our energy has run out and we sit on the side of the road of purpose, wondering 
Will we ever make it to the finish line? The Lord has impressed upon me the need to talk about how we can get back to winning the race against time and to make an impact in our world the way God intended for us to live. So today or tonight's episode is entitled Wind Chasers. I'm going to say that one more time. Wind Chasers. Let's take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with the episode entitled Wind Chasers. Hello, hello. My name is Christopher. I'm the editor of Full of Life Ministries San Diego podcast. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. But I would also like to say that if you would like any prayer, any words of encouragement, or would just like to reach out in any way, you can email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Also, we have a Twitter account. Our handle is at fulloflifesd. And feel free to reach out. We would love to hear from you. And lastly, I would like to say if you like what you're hearing and would like to donate, you can donate on any one of our pages. If you go to any of our pages, Spotify, Google, Spreaker, any of that, there should be a link that allows you to do so if that interests you. That's all for me. So thank you guys for listening and enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, we are back. And so let's get into today or tonight's episode entitled Wind Chasers. Now, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 14, Brother Solomon speaks a language that we can understand and appreciate. He says in chapter 1, verse 14 of Ecclesiastes, he says, When I observed all that happens under the sun, I realized that everything is pointless chasing after the wind. Brother Solomon uses a metaphor for those who pursue fertility. I should say fertility, futility. <laughs> because people of God pursuing meaningless things, things that do not have eternal significance, are only chasing after the wind. This is what life has taught Brother Solomon. He started out well. He was chosen by God from the time that he was a child to be the next king after his father, David. And I mean, Sol Solomon had everything he could need for a lifetime of success. He had power, he had position, prosperity, and he had great wisdom. All gifts from the God who really loved Solomon. But yet, people of God, despite those gifts, despite all of the abundance, Brother Solomon began to drift away from God's purpose for his life. He finally does a introspective look and analysis of his life, and it caused him to pen these words through the Holy Spirit. And throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, Brother Solomon exposed his pursuits of chasing after meaningless things like chasing after women. <laughs> you see, Brother Solomon had 700 wives, 300 concubines, mistresses. And for those who think it's all right to have a few women on the side, multiple, multiple women in your life, just read Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 16 through 17, and get back with me and let me know what you think about this. God despised this type of behavior. Now, other wind-chasing moments that Brother Solomon shares with us was madness and folly, chasing after nonsensical things, foolish things. For he lacked the proper respect for God. He lacked the proper respect for God's truth. And we find Brother Solomon chasing after something that did not have substance. Another thing that Brother Solomon 
was chasing after because he was a wind chaser. He was chasing after rewarding himself with pleasure. Rewarding himself with pleasure. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 10 and 11 is Solomon confessing, making a confession that he was chasing after something that was bad for him in the end. Solomon also sought immortality, wind chaser, chasing after something that no one has ever achieved. Think about that, people of God. Everybody believes that they are going to live forever, and the reality is we're not going to live forever. We have to make sure that the time that's been given to us, that's been allotted to us, that we use our time wisely in honoring God. And the last one, because I could go on and on about Brother Solomon, his chasing after something that was not obtainable was trying to control the outcome of his life. Now, Ecclesiastes, the second chapter in the 26th verse says, because God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy to those who please God, but to those who are offensive or the person who is sinning, God gives task of hoarding and accumulating, but only so as to give it all to those who do please God. This too is what Brother Solomon says. This too is pointless and a chasing after wind. So when you ch chase after the things we pour our lives into on the earth, it's not going to last. All of the achievements, the projects, our hard work, our, our rivalries, our alliances, our successes, none of that's going to last, people of God. The reality is we can't hang on to the rewards of this world any longer. We have to understand that those are things that are shaped in wind in a windfall situation. So as we think that these things have substance, they're just blowing away in time. And so in closing, let's focus on what's valuable. Let's move away from things that are detrimental to our purpose. And let's refocus on the promises of God. It's good to have achieve things, but don't let those things define who you are. Let God define who you are. So stop chasing after validation. Stop chasing after acceptance from people. Let's be determined to follow the principles of God and the teachings of God, and let's pursue his purpose for our lives. Let's, let's pursue his peace his joy, his unconditional love, his salvation, his freedom, his compassion, and his sacrifice. Let's return to the place of safety. Let's return to Jesus. Let's chase after the right things, which is in Christ Jesus. Let's pursue those things like wisdom, knowledge, and joy. And when we do those things, God will bless us because we now are in good standing with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for speaking to us on the episode entitled Wind Chasers. Help us to get our focus back on our purpose. You have given us this time to glorify you in the earth with the gifts and abilities that you have given to us. We want to honor you 
with our lives, oh God. We want to allow your light to shine everywhere we go, in any arena. We want you to be glorified. We want you to be lifted up. We want our purpose to drive us through this world so people will join in on the road of purpose so they can receive you. So forgive us of all sin. Sin, the sins that we were aware of and the sins that we were not aware of. Help us to rely on you and not to our own understanding. We'll be, caref we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for all the great things that you have done. And we ask all of these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, people of God, that is it for today or tonight, the episode entitled Wind Chasers. I'm Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I hope and pray that you really did enjoy this episode entitled Wind Chasers. If you have enjoyed this episode or any of the episodes that we put out on a weekly basis, please continue to share these podcasts with your friends, your family, your church members, whoever it may be. Allow this message of hope to reach the ears of people all over the world. And we are doing so because of your generosity. Listen, we are here to serve you. We are here to do our due diligence in making a difference in this world. So pray for us as we pray for you. Thank you for all of those who support us in all areas of this ministry, whether it's sharing these podcasts or giving financial blessings to this ministry. Whatever you can do to be part of this movement, please do so. Please email us at fulloflifesd at gmail if you get a chance, if you need a prayer request, if you need just a word of encouragement, or you just want to say, hey, Pastor Phil, I just want to say hi. We're good with that. We are so happy for the support from you all. Let's continue to do the mission and the purpose that God has given us. And let's continue to do this in Jesus' name. God bless everybody.